we have 90 minutes today, uh, reserved 90 minutes. I will give uh, like a 10 minute uh, introduction. I will leave a lot of time to uh, for your questions. So join me, joining me today, uh, Michelle McGraw and uh, Lumi uh, uh, Sawakis Adams, also from the IDEA program. Lisa from our review group and uh, Christy Leak uh, from the grants management. So together, uh, hopefully we can answer uh, all your questions. So um, building clinical research capacity is a core mission of the IDEA program. Uh, through our one of our core um, funding mechanisms, the IDEA uh, CTR, we support the infrastructure and the human resource development uh, for clinical and translational research in IDEA State. Um, more specifically, uh, we aim to strengthen the IDEA institution and the investigator's ability to uh, conduct, uh, to develop clinical and translational research programs uh, for extramural funding. We also uh, enabled clinical translational research activities uh, that address the health conditions and health challenges faced by uh, IDEA state populations. So um, obviously, um, clinical trial is a centerpiece of clinical research. And through the next few slides, I, I hope to make the point that uh, strengthening clinical trial capacity in IDEA state is a pressing need. So here you can see on the, on the right corner, uh, you can see that uh, NIH actually um, each year found about more than 7,000 clinical trials. Unfortunately, less than 10%, actually more like 6% uh, of those trials happened in the 24 IDEA states. Uh, correspondingly, if you translate those trials into founding dollars, uh, this is 5.6 billion altogether, but uh, about only 400 million in IDEA state. This is around 7%. So the distribution is shown on, oops, a color coded map on the right, on the left, you can see, um, the red means more and uh, the light colored means less. You can see uh, this, this map is definitely off balance. All idea state have a very light color here. The same pattern extends to uh, observation, observational studies. Uh, this is the same uh, sort of methodology in, in collecting the data. You can see that again, uh, NIH in FY21 supported about 700 uh, observational studies. And uh, again, this is less 5% uh, of those studies are uh, happening in uh, IDEA state. And in terms of founding dollar, again, this is about uh, 5%. So, what are the issues? And as I just mentioned, that this is a multi-billion dollar problem or challenge. So there are many obstacles and challenges. And over the years, different uh, uh, groups, different institutes also tried. So uh, we want to, uh, through our work with the IDEA community, as well as a literature study, we identified uh, two barriers, we hope uh, through this funding mechanism, we can put our hands on it uh, to make a difference. One is lack of effective communication. Uh, that include uh, communication between IDEA institutions and trial sponsors. Uh, specifically, IDEA institution, as well as researchers, are often not well informed about uh, uh, ongoing or upcoming trials. And on the other hand, the trial sponsors um, often are not familiar, are not informed about uh, the capacities that 
of idea state institutions have that can contribute to uh, a lot of the trials. The second barrier really is practically on the ground. Uh, we know that uh, uh, the clinicians, the clinic, uh, clinical investigators are super, super busy. And we do need um, professionals that uh, actually were not physicians, but have the skills to run clinical research or clinical trials. So those are clinical research coordinators. So to address those two barriers, we uh, designed this funding mechanism to support two um, sets of activities or two components. One is clinical trial service core that is uh, specifically to strengthen communication between idea institutions and trial sponsors and uh, develop collaborations between them. And the second one is to uh, support a clinical research coordinator develop, development program to develop professionals who can manage trials <clears throat> at idea state. So obviously, uh, those two sets of uh, uh, activities need a, a experienced and dedicated team uh, to lead. And we uh, plan to fund one five-year award uh, with 1.8 million per year direct cost budget. To get uh, into a little more specific uh, of those components. Um, for the clinical trial service uh, core, uh, as illustrated on the left, really is to bridge those two entities to strengthen uh, um, communication uh, between them. So we envision that the core will, the core will develop and maintain an inventory of upcom upcoming trials and also to develop and maintain an idea database of clinical expertise, capacities, patient catchment areas, and patient population characteristics of idea uh, institutions. And the core will disseminate this information to both trial sponsors, as well as the uh, clinical researchers uh, in idea state. We also expect that the core uh, to proactively match sponsors or CRO, uh, uh, the contract research organizations that runs trials uh, with appropriate idea institutions. The budget for this core is approximately $300,000 per year. Uh, with this uh, budget is allowed to uh, support for the cost of the uh, inventory development, inventory and database development and maintenance, and activities to match the trial um, uh, sponsors and the idea state institutions, and uh, the salary for key personnel. The clinical research coordinator development program. Um, is a little more complicated, but many uh, of you have experience in this area. Um, the target participant are nurses. Um, also, the others who are involved in clinical care um, research or research administration. We envision that the program can be up to two years um, the participant's effort in the, in the program will be up to 25% of their uh, professional effort. Um, we do not expect uh, the participant actually will leave their job. Uh, I should clarify that the participant, we expect them to be from the idea state institutions. They should maintain their job while uh, participant participate the training, but while they participate the training, the time and effort they spend on, uh, on this training uh, will be paid uh, by the program uh, for their salary. Um, 
the program should have two components. One is didactic. This is to um, for the uh, grantee institution to provide uh, to teach the knowledge to manage clinical studies uh, that include policies, building, uh, uh, enrollment, the data share, and so on and so forth. Um, while we do, we did not uh, require a syllabus in the application, but we will encourage you to include a syllabus in the application so that reviewers can appreciate your track record and uh, expertise in this area. Um, following the didactic component, there should be immersive component for the participant to obtain hands-on experience. Um, the to facilitate this to to uh, to work, the um, immersive component should be in idea state institutions, probably uh, all uh, uh, associated affiliated with idea CTRs, and the site should be uh, close in commuting distance from the participants' home institution. And through the immersive experience, uh, obviously the, uh, the participant will apply, apply and practice what they learn in the didactic component. Um, we do expect the, uh, the award or the development program to issue a certificate. Um, the, as I mentioned that the overall length of the program can be up to two years but also to make it practical and to accommodate participant actually coming in with different level of experience. You can uh, structure, um, a develop a modular structure in multiple module, modules and uh, also to uh, provide certificate a different uh, level. So uh, the budget for this program is 1.2 million per year. Uh, it's relatively high because as I mentioned, it meant to provide salary support for the participant. And obviously um, this program will have instructors for the didactic uh, component, as well as trainers uh, uh, at the immersive uh, site. So uh, their effort should also be compensated. I'm going to talk a little bit about the leadership team um, and what it takes to manage the site. Obviously, we expect the grantee institutions being those who do have a track record in uh, conducting clinical trials and uh, complex uh, observational studies and do have a relevant experience in providing educational activities in this space. And therefore they do actually within the institution, uh, they do have experienced personnel and uh, existing resources. We expect a steering committee to provide a governance for the program. The steering committee should be diverse and uh, uh, with balanced uh, representation. For example, it uh, should have the um, idea state institutions being uh, represented in addition to the grantee institution and probably uh, the, the participant, for example, a research nurse uh, to be on the uh, steering committee. Um, but as uh, for practical reason, uh, I want to remind you that uh, do not contact uh, the potential member on the uh, steering committee prior to the award uh, do, and do not name them in the application. Uh, this is simply, uh, if you name them, um, the uh, conflict of interest issue becomes so much more uh, uh, complex. So leave them out in your application. To lead the program, uh, obviously we expect, um, well, first of all, the central administration has a budget of uh, $300,000 per year. Uh, the, we expect the PI being experienced 
in leading clinical trial uh, studies, as well as programs with mul multiple stakeholders like this one. And as I dis discussed earlier, there are uh, many different stakeholders or players in this. So the PI, we expect our senior members with experience in leading such programs. And also, uh, the PI should be knowledgeable about the idea programs and institutions. And this budget can be used to provide salary support for the PIs and other key personnel, and as well as administrative costs such as uh, website development and maintenance and essential travel. To um, remind you about the key dates, so um, we are today is uh, May 18th, and in about three months, um, if you're interested, we, we hope you submit a letter of intent. Uh, this is not absolutely required, but we'll, we will like it so that uh, uh, make our planning easier. And the application is due. September 26 is about four months from now. And they, the applications will be reviewed next March. And the council meeting will be uh, the May council. And uh, right after that, we will be able to uh, make a war. Um, I want to give you one more reminder. That is whatever we uh, presented and in our uh, answers to your questions, uh, probably not uh, able to cover everything described in the FOA. And uh, so, and also there, there will be, I, I believe we're going to provide you accurate information, but if there's any discrepancy that FOA uh, uh, overrides everything we said. So I strongly encourage you to, before you start your writing, actually read the FOA. You know, all of you read many papers every day or many, uh, 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 every week. So for the next five years of funding and the engaging activity in this, I think it is worthwhile to actually read the uh, uh, FOA before you write it. So, It's not moving. Okay. All right. I think that's uh, a quick summary. Uh, we can um, start the questions. Let's see. Please type your question into the chat box. Okay. Uh, let's see. First question Would a multi institution collaboration be appropriate for this mechanism? Yes, multi-institution uh, collaboration is uh, definitely appropriate and also depend on um, exactly what you mean for collaboration. Uh, I would say it's actually essential. For example, you have a grantee institution, then the immersive uh, component has to be in multiple different institutions. So that's a level of collaboration that is absolutely essential. If you meant whether um, like a co-PI or two institutions um, managing the, for example, the uh, uh, trial uh, service core as well, as well as the didactic component, I think uh, that is allowed, it, it, it's okay if you see uh, 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 that as fit. Um, there is a follow-up question, a second question is related to that, single site versus multiple site. Um, I hope my comment addressed uh, that question as well. I see this from Howard Fox. If, if it doesn't, um, please follow up. Good. Next question, how about a cross-state collaboration? Um, again, uh, I believe what we just discussed covered this as well. Okay. And um, this isn't limit to CTR. 
correct? Uh, we can, yes, you're correct. Um, for just give you an example, if a CTSA institution that is located in, in idea state, they are uh, eligible as well, uh, either as the applicant institution or as collaborator. The immersive experience should be with a founded com complex observational study or clinical trials. They should be able to cover both. And, but obviously uh, you can, can be multiple site if, if uh, um, a single site cannot accommodate both. Um, but we encourage you to look for site that have experience in both. So we will um, wait a little bit if hopefully you can think of any question that you want to clarify with us. Okay, if no more questions, we will stop at 3.30. And, um, um, but if you do have, you know, questions come up while you're preparing for your application, uh, do contact us. Meg, is this going to be posted, the PowerPoint or anything? Yes. So we can share. Thanks. Yes. So uh, the, I was worried I wouldn't type fast enough before you logged off. <laughs> the slides and the, actually the, the webinar is recorded. So the slides, the webinar, uh, of course, the, the FOA are all on our website. I will be on our website. At this point, only the FOA. So either this is very, very clear, or uh, I managed to completely confuse you. We'll see. Good. Thank you, Howard. Thank you, Ming. And we have time back in our days. <laughs> All right. Great. You, you, we saved uh, saved everybody sixty minutes. That's not bad, right? Have a great day.